I used to be kind of a messy person. This is embarrassing to admit. Hey friends, welcome back. I wanna share some of the things that I have caught myself not doing thanks to decluttering. Hopefully this will give you some inspiration in case clutter is coming into your house the same way it was coming into mine. I have talked about not looking to stuff to solve your problems, but these ways are a little bit more specific. Number one, I don't store a whole bunch of stuff under my bed anymore. I wish I had a picture of all the stuff my husband and I had under our bed. We did this for at least 10 years. It was organized, but it was packed. It was out of sight, yet accessible, but because we had so much stuff, we could not put things under our bed. It was valuable real estate. We kept a lot of sentimental type items, things from our younger years, things from our childhood, things like that. But we also had a lot of random stuff under there too. Instead, we each have one box of our sentimental items that we keep in the closet of our home office. Now, I understand that some people don't have the luxury of not storing things under their beds. For me, storing things under my bed was just a way for me to keep too many items instead of dealing with them. So if you're someone who has things under your bed, ask yourself if you really need to store things there. If you're storing things under your bed because you genuinely need the space, or if you're keeping things there for the same reason that I was, because it's out of sight, out of mind. Number two, I don't store things in every nook and cranny anymore. Just because I have the space does not mean it needs to be filled with something. I have talked about this before, but since decluttering, one of my top organizing tips is to embrace open spaces. Repeat after me, just because I have the space does not mean I have to fill it. So by not storing things in every nook and cranny or under my bed, I have less to take care of and I buy less because I'm not looking to fill every little space. Number three, I don't buy things I don't love anymore because I know I'll just end up decluttering them. This has happened time and time again. This isn't to say that I never decluttered things that I once loved, because I definitely have, but the odds of me having to declutter something that I bought not even loving it is exponentially higher. Number four, I don't impulse buy because those are usually purchases that I end up regretting. Instead, I don't buy things without asking myself a few questions. If it's something I feel I need, is there a habit I could change instead? Do I really need this? What purpose would this serve that nothing I have already serves? And finally, where would I put this? I can run through those questions pretty quickly in my head because doing so has become second nature. And also, if there is something that I want that has passed all of those questions, I still wait at least 48 hours before purchasing. This gives me time to really think about those questions again. It gives me time to make sure that I thoroughly let myself think of all the reasons why I do or do not need that thing. Number five, I don't buy complicated things, specifically clothes. If it is something that requires something like a tank top or something under it, it's not worth it to me because that is extra stuff that I have to keep. Or if it's something that's hand wash only, I just don't buy it. I don't need more work to do. A few weeks ago, I was in Sam's Club and I saw a beautiful little girl dress. My daughter is growing. She needs a couple of new dresses anyway. So I saw this dress and I thought I would take a picture of it, show it to her and see if she liked it. Out of curiosity, I checked the tag and saw it was hand wash only. There are so many cute choices for dresses. I'm not gonna miss out by not buying that one. And this one isn't so much clothes, but if it's something that requires something else in order to use it, I think very carefully before buying it. Anything that has something else with it is not only going to add more clutter, but it's also going to be one more thing to remember. Oh, I can't use this until I get more, etc. Number six, buying things just because they're trendy. I talked about this one earlier. If I love it, that's one thing. But if I'm buying something just to have it to achieve a certain status, it may feel good in the short term, but long term, I'm not going to be happy with the purchase if I don't love it. Number seven, I don't squirrel things away anymore. Let me explain myself. I've talked a little bit before about how I used to stock up on things and I don't do that anymore in the way that I used to, but more so I don't buy things that turn into collections. For example, I have these note cards. I love sending thank you cards when someone does something nice or sending a note when someone needs to pick me up, but I used to almost collect these. These little cards are from Target. They used to have these, maybe they still do, 
in the dollar spot and I would buy them up whenever I would see them. And then I'd have a little collection of a different variety of cards that I could pull from whenever I needed one. And as I've decluttered, I have hated these. These are one thing that I have decluttered a small amount of, but since I know that they will get used, I have allowed myself to just use them up. I think I was buying them because they were cute and cute ones were hard to find, but really they weren't that hard to find. And it wasn't just those, it was craft supplies. At one time it was decorative paper. That was a huge weakness for me. You never know what you might need cute paper for. I did pass most of that on to family and friends. So like I said, I just don't squirrel things away anymore. It gives me more peace of mind knowing that when I need them, I can go to the store and buy them instead of keeping extra inventory in my home. Number eight, keeping gifts I don't need or want. This might be a little controversial and honestly, it kind of sounds harsh, but if someone gifts me something that I don't need or want, I no longer keep it out of obligation. I did that for years and it contributed immensely to the clutter in my home. Whether I was using it or not, Keeping it out of obligation was contributing to clutter in a big way. So when I am given a gift, I accept it gratefully and graciously. But when it comes down to it, if I don't want it or need it, I am not going to keep it out of obligation. That being said, I am fully prepared to honestly explain where it went if the gift giver asks. But when someone gives you something, once they give you the item, the exchange ends there. You are under no obligation to keep the item. If someone gives you something with the expectation that you have to keep it, then they should probably be the one keeping the item. So if someone gives me something like a candle or a tea towel or a, a trinket or something like that, I will graciously accept it. But if I don't want it or need it, I will promptly put it in my donate box. The longer it floats around the house, the greater the chances I will keep it and it becomes clutter. So neighbor gifts, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, I no longer keep out of obligation. And I will say that most people who know me well don't often give me physical items anymore. Number nine, I don't keep free swag type items from businesses anymore. It seems like a lot of businesses give out pens or shirts or bags or whatever it is, but I don't keep that stuff anymore. Or given the choice, I say no thank you and graciously opt out of accepting it entirely. Most things that come into our homes this way are not items that we need. If you genuinely need a new bag, you'd probably go out and acquire it yourself instead of waiting for your insurance company to give you one. When things come to us, being able to realize that we don't actually need them makes it so much easier to get rid of them. Number 10, buying things just because they're cheap. Look, I love a good deal as much as the next girl, but I used to shop the clearance racks every time I went to a store and I would end up buying things just because they were on clearance, even if I wasn't necessarily in the market for something. Just this morning, I had to run to Target to pick up something for a friend. So I was looking at the kids' clothes because my youngest son needs a couple of new shirts and I happened to see a clearance rack. I haven't shopped clearance for a long time. So I walked by and found a winter shirt that was less than $4. It's been a long time since I've seen a brand new kid's shirt for less than $4. And as I was standing there holding it, I realized it wasn't that cute. My son didn't need another winter shirt and he probably wouldn't wear it because of the feel of the fabric. So I am all about a good deal. But I've noticed a lot of times in my area, clearance racks are full of clothes that didn't sell for a good reason. Maybe if I was actively going to the store and shopping the clearance racks every couple or few days, I may have something different to say about that. But that's just not how I want to spend my time. My point here is that in the past, when I have bought things just because they were cheap, I acquired a lot of these items. And then my kids had a lot more clothes in their closet and I hadn't really saved any money. Now I find I don't miss out a ton by buying clothes that aren't on clearance. I buy less because I buy the clothes that my kids will actually wear. And I do try to get as good of a deal on them as possible by knowing in advance what clothes we're looking for, and then having time to catch them on a sale. Number 11, I stopped leaving things out because I was going to use them later. Unless I'm going to use them in the next hour, I don't leave things out. I used to be kind of a messy person. When my husband and I were newlyweds, I had a basket on my floor. This is embarrassing to admit. And when I changed into my pajamas at the end of the day, I would simply toss the clothes I had just taken off into this basket. Once it was full, I would put it away. But probably for like a week or until I needed something from that basket, it would just accumulate. I think it probably drove my husband crazy, but I cringe about that now, just thinking about it. It is so much easier to put things away when I'm done with them. 
And I have found that oftentimes I left things out thinking I would use them again, but then I wouldn't use them again as often as I thought I would. And it contributed immensely to me having a mess wherever I went. Since decluttering, I have loved having a much cleaner house and it is so much easier to keep it clean with less stuff. And as anyone that has ever had a messy space can attest to, clutter attracts clutter. So when you have a cluttered space, it is naturally going to get even more cluttered. Number 12, I no longer have to be in the know about every possible worst case scenario that could happen. I've learned a lot of panic buying or overbuying happens first in my head. I am not proposing that we should all stop reading the news and being informed, but panic scrolling rarely does anything for anyone. I don't need to know everything that is going on everywhere because doing that causes me to panic and buy things to prepare for situations that likely will never happen to me. Instead, I am reasonably informed and practically prepared for realistic potential things that could come up. Not only has this one been so helpful in keeping clutter out, but it has also been a breath of fresh air for my mental health. Number 13, instead of buying, I utilize local resources. The thing that comes to mind is books. I don't often buy books anymore. We have some kids books that we bought before we decluttered or kids books that we've been given and we didn't keep a ton. So we take full advantage of our local library and we go there at least once a month to get new books. But that gives us time to enjoy the books and then take them back and get new books, having an experience in the process. Just recently, my kids had a book fair at school. My kids had their own money that they were wanting to spend. Thanks to going to the library often, my kids all love books. My son found a book in the take home book fair newspaper that they send home ahead of time. He found a book about history that he wanted. I asked him if he wanted to spend his money on it or if he wanted to see if we could find it at the library and then he could read it for free. We looked it up and found that our library has the book that he could check out. He was thrilled because he could still have the experience of reading the book, but then he could save his money to put toward a Lego set that he's been saving up for. Kindle books are also an option that cut down on book clutter. My point here is that renting books from the library makes it so you don't have to buy the books and then have them sit around your house. If you've ever packed and moved books, they take up a lot of space and add a lot of bulk. I think somewhere along the line, we've been told that we truly don't love something unless we actually own it. That is just not the case. We still get the same experience as someone who has a large home library full of books. My kids and I love reading and we love books just as much as someone who owns an expansive collection of books. These are all things that I am taking back to the library. There's about 55 books and then two boxes full of books and activities. I have had these things for three weeks. We have enjoyed them. We have read them. We have used them. And now we get to take them back. Had I purchased all of these items, these things would all be in my house to stay. This is your reminder to look for local resources like libraries, things where you can borrow things free of charge, enjoy them, use them, and then take them back without them taking up valuable space in your home. I love hearing from you and what things you do or don't do anymore since decluttering or what bad habits you hope that decluttering will help you break. Thanks for watching friends. Have a great day.